This video has been sponsored by NordVPN. Stay tuned to hear more. You know a console's doing pretty well when there's an overabundance of games to play. Nintendo might have had this problem last gen, but the Switch is like a Costco in comparison. Boot up the eShop and it's like, oh God, no. It was admittedly pretty easy to keep up with Wii U exclusives, but with Nintendo and third parties going ham this time around, it's like we're in the wild, wild Wii lands again. Don't even get me started on the endless ports. Look, I'm saying good job, Nintendo. Maybe some of the ports are a little, uh, lackluster, but you got games this time around. Considering the eShop's a pain in the butt to navigate currently, with no way to sort by exclusivity, I realized I wanted to see all there was. We all know about the big AAA Nintendo stuff, but what about the random indies or AA titles? The things that get buried in all the new releases that drop to like 10 cents on sale. Why would you, why? So yo, it's Austin, and today I want to take a look at some of the lesser known and weirder Switch exclusives out there. There's actually a ton of these even without hitting up the Japanese store, so I guess we'll probably make a lot of these videos. But first, a word from our sponsor. Oh, it's time to watch my favorite YouTube. I can't believe you've done this. That sucks. And so does Article 13. If you're watching this from Europe, there's a pretty big chance that your ISP might have the ability to censor things that you see on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, or wherever just about. But thankfully, NordVPN has your back. Internet security is important. With NordVPN, you can have access to thousands of servers all over the world, but you can also use it to shield your own computer from intrusive websites and surveillance. I've been using NordVPN to watch a lot of the region-locked content on a bunch of streaming websites. Sometimes something you like might disappear off of American Netflix, but is totally there on Japanese Netflix, so it's like, hey, I'm paying for this service, I'm gonna do it. So for a limited time, you can get 75% off a three-year plan at nordvpn.com forward slash Austin Eruption. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.99 a month, so you can browse and buy securely on all your devices. And for a short time, use the code Austin Eruption to get an extra month of Nord for free. Protect yourself online today. End ad. The Switch launch was filled with a bunch of full and mid-priced games all fighting for your attention. Even on the digital side of things, if you wanted something that wasn't a port, you'd be forking over a decent amount of money. I, for one, like finding the cheap things priced brand new at like three or five dollars. Games that may not necessarily have a ton of content, but are pretty fun in spurts. I'd like to think that Kamiko is exactly that. Japanese indie developer Skip Moore, responsible for, at the time, a 3DS game called Drancia, put the out and I think surprised everyone. The Switch was hot, the want for budget priced games was hot, people had beaten Breath of the Wild and they needed a new thing while they waited for uh, for this th this one. Join me! Kamiko popped up for five bucks and I guess everyone felt it because Skip Moore reported over 200,000 sales last year so hey, good on you guys. It helps that it's pretty good. Kamiko is a Zelda-like action puzzle game that takes place in an extremely unique setting. You control a priestess on a mission to save the world. A lot of the imagery is reminiscent of Shintoism paired with like a magical girl kind of thing. Aesthetically, the main girls are basically Magic Knights for Earth, and that's pretty cool, I guess. Now because this thing's only five bucks, it's kind of limited and not very long. In fact, there's only five levels to get through and it took me about an hour for my first run. Kamiko wants you to play it multiple times to get higher scores, find the secrets in each level, and of course, play with each character. They got different weapons weapons and special attacks and colors. I liked playing as Hinome here, but they're all pretty fun to control. Also, the music is like really fucking good. <laughs> Look, if you want something cheap and easy to play at just about any time, it's hard to go wrong with Kamiko. It might be a gamey game with little to no central narrative, but it is a pleasant experience. So the next game I want to talk about decided to like de-exclusify itself in the middle of filming this video like get like yesterday. So I just want to mention it real quick before it is no longer an exclusive. So let's talk about Toki on the Switch. Toki's a remake of an old Japanese arcade game that faded into obscurity. It's got an NES port that's worth a decent amount, but other than that, it's a pretty run of the mill old school platformer about a dude that turns into a monkey and tries to save damsel. Also, you attack by throwing up on people. 
Anyways, here's the X Switch exclusive remake of the arcade version, Toki. I missed this one because it came out mid-December, and I feel like a ton of others did as well. She looks visually amazing. But also, here's a clip on YouTube of the remake from 2009 by a developer called Golgoth Studio. It also got approved on Steam Greenlight in 2013. Wait, what? Yeah, so for some reason, the Toki remake was in development hell for nine years. Even though it came out under the publisher and developer Microids, it's very clearly the remnants of that original project. I don't even know if it's the same person, considering there's not a proper credit sequence, but there's something weird going on here, and who knows if we'll ever get the full story. It's a visually beautiful remake, and is pretty damn faithful to its original source material. Though I will say, remaking Toki was a weird decision in the first place. Place. Also, fuck this. Let's step away from the indies for a sec. Uh, sometime last year, Ubisoft decided that they were going to basically reboot an old Wii game that they made. It wouldn't be a modern Nintendo console without shovelware garbage, so let's talk about Sports Party. You know, when I think of like retail released games that are exclusives, my mind goes to like Yoshi's Crafted World, Smash Brothers, and Zelda. So when I was squatting down looking through game releases at a random store, my ass probably hanging out, it was pretty bizarre to see sports parties sitting right next to Sonic Forces. Though that's probably exactly where it belongs. I'll admit it, I got a soft spot for these dumb motion-controlled minigame collections. I said it before, but I love playing bad games. I'll never recommend them, but owning something like Carnival Games or Help Wanted and putting it on for my friends and having a laugh is always the best. So when you toss sports party in front of me and I see a woman on a skateboard going straight into the ocean, this dude golfing his ball in the wrong direction, and this motherfucker jumping like Kobe, I get excited. So we boot this bad boy up and the beautiful island looks really brown, but that's okay, cause we gotta make our characters. It's weird, you actually have a pre-selection of characters that will appear in mini games with you and you can customize each one of them. That's pretty cool. It's like a little family. I actually thought the UI and art style was totally fine as well. In fact, it's, it's too fine. It's extremely sterile, but I kind of expect that from these types of games. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this grindy unlock system. Like in this, really, you gotta make sure to do your sports party dailies, your sports party jet ski all rights reserved dailies, bitch. Okay, let's get into it. Golf. It's, it's golf, really poorly designed golf. Now I'm all for everybody's golf or Mario Golf, but something about sports party feels really off. You're automatically in the test shot position anytime you play, so you can't just like go for it like in those other games. The physics of shooting the ball aren't nearly as in depth as your normal golfing game, so you spend a lot of time guessing during the putts. It's pretty forgettable. Volleyball. Wait, no, I, I mean beach tennis? Because animating people playing volleyball was too difficult. You don't get to move around freely. It just kind of like scoots you. Sick. Basketball. You know how this goes. There's also a hoop shooting contest you can do. It's fine. It's easy. Like maybe, maybe a bit too easy. Skateboarding. I wish I could convey just how bad this feels. The skateboarding game is so easy that it might as well just be an auto scroller. You just race and hit boost pads. You'll win, don't worry. Frisbee, all rights reserved. Yo, this is the worst. There's two different modes. The first being press a button while holding a direction, but there's only three directions to throw it in. So make sure to remove your brain cells before trying if you wanna have fun. There's also a mode where you have to aim more intricately and attempt to hit balloons. There's no way to really tell where or how you're aiming or this, this fucking power, so just, you guess, fucking sucks. And lastly, jet ski. All rights reserved. It's good to know that Ubisoft isn't just reviving Star Fox. Turns out Nintendo gave them Wave Race as well. You know, I expected of all the games here that this would be a good one, considering it's like front and center on the box. But I mean, look at it. Your jet ski feels so awful to control. It's constantly jerking around. I've played a ton of games with water sports, I mean water racing, and none of them have felt this bad. Not even Jet Moto, which is like a masterpiece in comparison, but also fuck Jet Moto. And that sports party. Like actually, I've done just about everything I can do in this game. It's been like an hour. Most of the challenges I did first try, so now all we got is grinding for costumes. Don't forget to do your dailies, brother. <laughs> Listen, all I'm trying to say is that it's no surprise that sports party was half off in its first month. 
But look, everything I just mentioned is pretty well known compared to what's coming up. The Nintendo Switch has a ton of digital indie titles, and even more that are exclusive, so let's start with the extremely weird Toridama Brave Challenge. Toridama Brave Challenge is a strange WarioWare-like game made by 1G Mode. Is it this G Mode? I don't know. What about this one? No, I got you, it was the first one. But these guys own the rights to all the old Data East stuff, so like, if y'all wanna make another Tattoo Assassins, like, I'm down. Toridama is basically exactly what it sounds like. You're challenging yourself to be as brave as possible. How much are you willing to tempt fate so that this game won't call you a bitch-ass chicken? You play three games at a time, which for some reason are called questions. You got like, stop the car right before you dive off the cliff, defuse the bomb, as close to the time limit as possible, and the most dangerous of all, protecting my precious first kiss. <laughs> Disgusting. Love the idea, it's just unfortunately a $5 game where you can experience everything it has to offer in like 40 minutes. I love the cute references to other video game series, I love the ranking of your score based on birds. I'm not huge on the only soundtrack being the beating of a drum, which for some reason clips the audio, but that's okay. Maybe we'll get a full-fledged sequel, but I can't see that happening. And at least you can play it with a friend, it's cute. Next up, we got Doggy Ninja The Golden Mission. I looked at the trailer and cover art for this game and I was like, oh, shit, this looks neat. It's like Samurai Pizza Cats, but with ninja dogs, uh, or doggy ninjas. I love the goofy art style and pun names, but this game should not exist. Coming in at a whopping $8, Doggy Ninja might be one of the most one-note games I've played on this channel. Sure, it's a Switch exclusive, but what you see on the screen right now, this fucking Smash Brothers level, this is it. It's the whole game. The developers at Toydia, known for Dragon Fang Z and th th this, thought it a great idea to turn the coin battle mode from Smash Brothers into an entire game. You break the platforms to get coins, you crush your enemies with the falling platforms. I I got nothing else. The game's description on the eShop's pretty funny though. Every sentence ends with an exclamation point like you're being scolded. Let's enjoy this game with anyone, anytime, and anywhere, bitch. You guys are probably sick of me talking about like real video games, so let's ask ourselves the age-old question. The Wii U had it, but does the Nintendo Switch have memes? Well, you could play Guacamelee, but today I'm talking about Super Ola and the Lost Burgers. What is a Super Ola? I have no idea, but if you think you can go two screens in this game without seeing a dated meme or reference from a decade ago, you'd be sorely mistaken. Under Cola, Super Ola might be one of the strangest things I've seen on the eShop. Not just because it's a Switch exclusive, but because I saw a fucking hot dog doing all your base are belong to us less than 20 seconds into hitting the fucking start button. Talking doges, cars getting wrecked like in Street Fighter. I mean, hell, your main method of attacking is a shoop de whoop which, goddammit, I said that in 2019. Oh my god, stop. You have all of this, and I just have one question to ask. Why? Super Ola is an auto-scroller where you die in one hit, so you gotta retry or use power-ups to get to the end. You jump, jump, occasional mini-game, shoops and whoops, jumps again, that's it. It's a meme game. It's garbage trash for idiots like myself. Now it's much higher quality than Meme Run on the Wii U. There's a semblance of care here with some of the references, although you might just interpret that as laziness. Probably leaning on the latter with the fact that Dragon Ball Z, Shinron, and Rage Faces are in the game, but I guess that's how it goes. It's not how it goes. Who thought it was a good idea to put Harry Belafonte's Banana Boat song in this game? The best thing I can say about Superola is that it's $6 and like triple the length of Sports Party. So if you're looking for a game with a good self-hatred to money spent ratio, this one's pretty good. Or you know, you could like buy a burrito and eat it. When I saw our next game and our final game being shown on a Nintendo Direct sometime in like 2017, I was like, wow, that looks like the most me game ever. Then I didn't hear about it for like a year. Did you guys know Gal Metal came out? Like, like, like a fucking while ago. This is Gal Metal. 
this probably doesn't make any sense. You're looking at the screen right now and thinking, uh, and that's okay. This is a rhythm game. I'm not sure if it's a very good one, but it is a super interesting one. You play as Rinko. Well, actually, you play as this unnamed high school kid who gets abducted by aliens at the same time as her, where you're then fused into the same body where he controls her and she's like in the brain, but that's like the same thing, right? You're part of the metal club at an all-girls school where you play the drums. And now look, as a drummer, this immediately speaks to me. I've been playing for like 17 years, so any game that gives me the ability to drum or play as a drummer is a big win in my eyes. But hold up, hold up, let's rewind. Do y'all know the name Tak Fuji? I remember Tak Fuji. He used to work at Konami on various games, but you probably remember him for... Hi. One million troops. Wow. You'll be sucked. Extreme. Please clap. <laughs> Yeah. So after leaving Konami, Fuji joined a dev studio called DMM Games. They made... Uh, that's about it. And like a virtual fighter thing. But last year, they released Gal Metal, and it is almost everything I want in a weird game. So Rinko and her band, Kichi Joji Metal Girls, find themselves having to be the final line of defense against an alien invasion. Turns out those aliens are weak to the sound of metal music, so these girls do their best to fight them off. As the drummer, you're basically the core, so if you sound like shit, everything does. So, uh, don't fuck up. You've got multiple methods of controlling things here. The main one is swinging your arms around like drumsticks. Your left Joy-Con is a snare and the right is a bass drum. But as you can tell, if you look at the screen, there's no notes to follow. It's not rock band where it's like, ah uh, yes, here is the chart and now I will play this. Gal Metal wants you to do it on your own. You make the beat, you determine how the song is gonna flow, you need to practice with your band. Awesome, I love it. I played weird things like these growing up like all the time, so something like Gal Metal should fit in really nicely. However, you play it like this the entire time, and it's not very intuitive. There is another control scheme, but it also kind of sucks. Gal Metal lets you play by pressing buttons on the Joy-Cons, and it does a cool thing where it gives you access to an entire drum set. However, nothing counts towards your score besides bass and snare, and it's extremely to pull off a proper beat with this, never mind any TV latency you might have. The best way to play it is like in the portable mode, but I don't feel like getting my screen all greasy and fingery. The lack of notations on the screen's a fun and novel concept, but it'll make certain players feel lost. However, Gal Metal isn't just a rhythm game, which is weird to think about. It's also part incredibly charming comic book, part visual novel, part social simulator. Each chapter has these cute and fantastic looking story panels that are extremely stylistic. The music itself is fun and very percussion heavy, which I really enjoy. When you're not practicing beats on your own or songs with your band, you're working jobs, hanging out with your friends, building your social links and personal stats. These actually affect your scores in game, so you gotta make sure to build the ones that you want to get big point. Your band members are pretty charming, and there's a lot of fun dialogue. While it's limited, considering this is a budget indie-ish game, some of the interactions genuinely made me laugh. It's all light-hearted silliness and gal metal, which is welcome after watching fucking Avengers Endgame. Also, Shindori's the best. She's pretty rad. Playing through Gal Metal actually has me interested in an anime or a comic instead. While I love drumming in rhythm games, the mechanics themselves just aren't sensical enough to carry its own weight. The art style and concept is strong enough alone for me to want to see it animated in some shape. Also, I need some confirmation that Rinko isn't just leaving her fucking drum set lying around for other people to carry. Like, dude, I had to move my drums hundreds of times and that shit sucks! Fuck you, anime girl. But you know what? For 20 bucks or cheaper, cause it goes on sale a lot, a weird rhythm game like this is pretty easy to recommend, but with a big old asterisk, because I'd recommend you be pretty familiar with rhythm games for this one. Even if you are, you might get lost since Gal Metal doesn't tell you what it wants you to play besides like basic beats. In what order? Figure it out. Be more varied, fuck you. Also, be prepared to fight the Joy-Con. What, what did you expect? Motion controls still have like a really long way to go. 
And well, that's all I got for today, but I actually do have a ton of Switch exclusives that are just ready to be looked at, so if you want to see that, let me know. I, I'll, I'll do it as soon as I can. Kamiko and Gal Metal are probably my favorites of the day, so if you're going to try any of these games out, definitely give them a look. Get Gal Gun with Gal Gun? Gal Metal comes like a little less recommended. You got to be like a certain type of person to enjoy that, but still, I really liked it. I liked them both. Maybe you'll like them as well. But until next time, I've been Austin, and I promise that I won't look in your webcam. Also, hey, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Austin Eruption. Save 75% off a three-year plan. You can do it. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Special Patreon shout out to Chris Shelton, Steven Schneiers, Donald Dowdy, Alfredo Ariano, Shintaro, Superfly1787, Irrational, Christopher Olivia, Jackets, Jacoby Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Vile, Legend Gary, Nitron, and Jay Roos. Thank you all so much for your generous support. Final Fantasy 13 will resume at a certain point. Uh, it'll be offline, but then we'll have the game club meeting together. I'll get back into that in a little bit, but guess what? More videos are coming. I love you. Sleep more. You need it. You need more sleep.